Hello, thanks for joining me. This video will be all about how I use the GPS rescue function in Betaflight. I'm going to start off giving you a few of my thoughts about GPS rescue and uh, how I feel about it. Then I'll move on to uh, sh showing you my GPS rescue mode and failsafe setup in Betaflight. And after that, I'll also cover an alternative to using GPS rescue. How much do I trust it? Well, I trust it enough to use it occasionally in the event of video loss, as well as set it as my failsafe. But I don't trust it completely. A couple of years ago, I actually lost a quad while uh, trying to use GPS rescue mode after losing video, and I could tell by the timing of things that it just dropped to the ground. And then I lost telemetry and connection and everything. So I do trust it because I've tested it many times, and it's it's worked every single time. Um, after having it set up properly and when I was using it properly. But just this one case where it, things, things didn't work and uh, for some reason it dropped my quad, but for the most part I trust it. I test it regularly to help gain confidence in using it as well as working on my muscle memory for the different auxiliary switches. It might sound uh, pointless to uh, learn your muscle memory or practice your muscle memory for aux switches, but when you lose video in that few seconds of panic, if you don't know exactly for sure what you want to do and you accidentally hit the wrong switch, then that could be bad. What if you accidentally hit the disarm switch instead? Anyways, I, I've found that practicing it makes me a lot more comfortable when it comes around to actually needing it in a panic situation. Now, having said this, I only use it when I have to. I often fly close to the ground and triggering GPS rescue in close proximity to anything is going to be risky. I also know an alternative that I have more confidence in. I'll cover that in a later chapter. Now I'll go on to uh, showing you my beta flight settings for GPS rescue and failsafe. So in beta flight here now to take a look at the settings. Uh, let's start on the conf Oh, I guess we'll start on the ports tab. So these are the port settings I use for my Brain FPV GPS. For the Matec GPS, I believe it will work with this same port setting, but I think I actually have my other quad with the Matec on this setting at the moment. That's where I've been using it. On the configuration tab here. So these are the settings I'm using for my Brain FPV GPS. And for the Matec GPS, the only difference is I set it to U-Blocks. And uh, I have my ground assistance type set because I live in North America, so I have North American. But you can also just leave it to auto detect if you're not sure which one to use. All right, and then the majority of the GPS rescue settings are going to be on the fail safe tab here. Uh, apart from these, there's only one other one that I adjust in the CLI, usually. So I'll go over these ones first and then go to the final one in the CLI. Uh, the angles, this is the maximum angle that the quad can go to while it's trying to get back home. I have it set to 45 degrees because I sometimes fly in some windy conditions. Uh, I believe the, the default is 30-something, and that's fine if you're not flying in the if you're not worried about having to get home in a high wind. Uh, initial altitude in meters, this is the height that it'll go up. Uh, I believe it's this much plus another 15 meters before uh, coming back home. Uh, let's see, for the that's if you have it at current altitude. If you have it at maximum altitude, I believe it goes to your maximum altitude plus this 50 meters. But I keep mine on uh, current altitude because I don't want it. Uh, sometimes I fly up a mountain. So if I've flown up a mountain and gone to 2,000 meters in the air and I'm coming back to my home point at uh, zero meters and I go behind something else close to me, I don't want it flying two kilometers up in the air to try to come back to me because that's extremely unsafe. So even though current altitude isn't the best setting for being sure to get my quad home, it's it's probably the safest setting. And you know, actually, even if you have it on maximum altitude and your quad ends up flying and going a kilometer in the air, you're probably gonna kill your battery just going up in the air for that long. 
So current altitude, I think, is the best setting for that. Uh, so descent distance. This is normally 200 meters. This is the this is the distance that the quad will uh, start descending down towards you uh, while, when it's this many meters away from you. It's normally 200 meters. I changed it to 50 meters just so that I can test my GPS rescue without having to go 300 meters away. Uh, the ground speed in meters a second. Uh, this is about 70 kilometers an hour, so now it's at like 45 miles an hour or something. And that's probably good for, for most of us. Uh, the throttle minimum and maximum, these are just the limits to restrain what uh, GPS rescue can do. So it's not going to automatically go to the maximum and minimum throttles. It's just during its uh, PID calculations for the for what to do, um, it's going to not exceed these. Uh, the throttle hover, I have mine set to 1300 because that's uh, around about the point that my quad hovers at through a majority of the battery. And now the ascend rate, I believe it's normally five, five meters a second. And I've put mine to 10 meters a second because I want my quad to get up in the air quick rather than uh, sort of continuing coasting forward. I want it to just level out and give throttle to go straight up right away. And the descend rate is in meters per second how quickly it's going to come towards the ground when it's coming back. But you want to just, I mean, I just leave that at default because you always want to take back control of your quad before it starts descending, unless, I mean, you've your video transmitter died while you were flying and you have don't have the option of taking control back. Uh, minimum satellites, I like to put it down to five just so that it doesn't uh, fail a sanity check as easily. Uh, but it's you, you don't want to fly when you have only five satellites. You want to wait till you have eight, nine, or ten before you go on a long-range flight. I just have this set to minimum you know, for that purpose of the sanity checks. And that brings us to the last thing, which is sanity checks. I have it set to fail safe only. Uh, I think that's the safest way to have it if um, you're going to be testing your GPS rescue. If you want to learn more about uh, what exactly goes on with the sanity checks, I'll include a link in the uh, description here to the Betaflight wiki for the GPS rescue section. And that's actually got a whole long procedure that it tells you to go through and explains explains a lot of it. It doesn't explain it in really well because last time it was updated was about a year and a half ago, so it's missing descriptions for uh, some of the features. But uh, it's it's definitely got some good helpful information in there for your first time using GPS Rescue. It's, it's a good overall procedure to follow. Uh, I guess the only other thing left, GPS is just tells you how many satellites you've got, which is none because I'm inside in an apartment on my workbench. Uh, so the last thing will be in the CLI here. So I'm going to type get GPS. And most of these you're going to find, uh, most of the ones you need to use are in the failsafe settings. Uh, there's some here that aren't, uh, that I do change, like GPS rescue, use mag, I set to off. I think it comes as on for default, yeah. Um, the only other thing here that I change is the GPS rescue yaw P. And I crank that up so that when the uh, GPS rescue is triggered, the quad swings around really quickly and then starts shooting up in the air. So when I'm, say, kind of tuning my GPS rescue, that's that's what I'm doing, is changing this yaw P and my ascend rate and adjusting the two of those until I can get the quad so that it turns around quickly and starts going up in the air at a, a reasonably quick rate. Not so fast that it's going to kill my battery, but fast enough that it's not going to continue coasting off in whatever direction it was going when I triggered it. Uh, in my case, I'm hoping to say I'm near some trees, I want it to turn around and start flying up in the air before it ends up coasting forward into those trees or sideways into the trees.
Uh, and I guess that's it for all the GPS rescue settings for Betaflight. I'll uh, get on to the next section here now. Now I'll tell you about the alternative to GPS rescue mode, the accelerometer. Every flight controller will have a gyro as well as an accelerometer. And that's all you need to be able to use angle mode, which some might also think of as auto level. I have angle mode as well as GPS rescue mode on an auxiliary switch on my transmitter. I'll cover uh, angle mode and how I use it. In the event of video loss, I trigger angle mode and apply a heavy amount of throttle. So the point of this is to have the quad automatically level out and then give a bunch of throttle so that I should hopefully gain enough altitude to get over whatever the object is that's uh, started blocking my video. If video does not return after two or three seconds of this, then I will trigger GPS rescue mode because I don't want to fly blind for too long. I have angle mode and GPS rescue mode on the same three position switch on my transmitter. Okay, let's go over the aux switch setup for the transmitter. Position 1 does nothing. Position 2 is angle mode. Position 3 is angle mode as well as GPS rescue mode. Now let's take a look at how to do that switch setup in the beta flight modes tab. All right, let's have a look at what that looks like set up in the uh, beta flight modes tab here. So I'm using aux 3 for this. The first position of the switch does nothing. Then the second and third position for the switch both engage angle mode. And then GPS rescue is only on for the third position of the switch. So when I'm in the first position, it's only angle mode. And when I go to the second position, it's angle mode and GPS rescue mode. Then when I switch out of GPS rescue, it goes into angle mode, which also helps for stability because GPS rescue is going to be in its own angle mode as well. And then switching back to angle mode lets me kind of regain control of the quad but still be in angle mode. And then I can switch out completely and take back full control of the quad. Losing video can be very disorienting. Occasionally it might happen very quickly without any warning. You may panic if you're unsure of what you should do, which could result in you losing the quad and GoPro. That's why it's important to learn all about your GPS rescue mode, test a lot, and practice engaging it with the aux switch so you get a feel for what it's going to do, and also practice just hitting the auto level or um, angle mode and then giving it some throttle just to learn what your quad's gonna feel like and how it's gonna respond when you try to do this. And this will all make you more comfortable doing it in the event that you actually really need to when you lose video flying long range. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.